everyone, it's Erin, and today I'm going to be talking about some of the um, crafty, random, non-fiction books I've got sitting on my shelf. They're kind of hanging out down here because this is, I'm now in my quilt room. Um, so, what do you think of my new setting, by the way? This is my new set. Um, I set up some shelves in my quilt room and I put some books on it and I've got a more permanent place to film unless I actually want to quilt, in which case I'm going to have to deal with um, the fact that I don't have anywhere to sew um, or cut fabric. Eh, you know, these things happen. I wanted to share with you some of the books that I've bought over the years or been given over the years for quilting. And I think I've got all of them. But one of my favorite ones is Dare to be Square Quilting by Boo Davis. I was going to say Boo Radley and I'm like, nope, that's wrong. By Boo Davis. I bought this a few years ago and it uses a lot of strips. Everything is square pieces. Um, it's quite modern. Uh, the way she does it, but I love it because there's just all these um, great patterns or great quilts in here to, to make. And if you don't want to make quilts, there's a scarf you can make, um, there's a giant key quilt. It's just a lot of, there's a lot of fun patterns, like this giant alarm clock. And the one, that, well I bought it for the owl on the front, and the other one that I wanted to do was this robot. And I don't know why, but my nephew, it, like every time I see this robot, I just think of him, and I don't know why, but it's actually perfect for my husband because he's a big uh, robot sci-fi guy. So, love this book. I've never actually made anything out of it. I have, however, um, used some of her, she's very good at the start about giving some instructions on making the quilt, um, using your rotary cutter, finding your quarter inch seams. So it was a very good introductory book to some of the quilting concepts, and I liked that. Now, a few years ago, I did a quilting a Learn to Quilt course up in Edmonton at a quilt store there, and this was the built book they gave you, Rotary Magic. It was for something. It was for one of, it might have been using your, I don't know. It was one of the quilting courses there. And I like this because it actually gives you lots of information about learning to quilt, your basic quarter inch seams, um, and at the same time, like it tells you how to cut things, like parallelograms, uh, diamonds, trapezoids, blah, blah, blah. And then it gives you some patterns to use what you've learned. And what I use this for all the time, oh, I really want to do it cats, because I'm a crazy cat lady. But what I use this for usually is um, attaching the binding. Every, for a long time, every time I went to, to either quilt or attach the binding, I would open this up and go, okay, how wide is my binding supposed to be? And I'd get the information that I needed from it. So it's been a really handy guide. And at some point, I'm going to make some of these other quilts in here because there's just some great ones that I should. This one my mom gave me. So this is the 2003 Country Woman Christmas book. Um, I don't even know why I still have it. I, there was probably something in here I wanted to make because there's all kinds of Christmassy crafts and there'll be Christmassy recipes like cookies. Um, who doesn't like cookies? Not that the internet doesn't have a handful of recipes if you really want to look. I mean, they're hard to find. You don't just stumble across them when you type in cookies, no. Actually, I love that little chocolate bowl with chocolate covered strawberries. Anyway, um, I could probably get rid of this one, but there's always these little like recipes and stuff in them and I've just kept it for some bizarre reason. Do you do that? Do you keep books and you're like, why do I have this on my shelf? I do that all the time. Um, this is another one actually. I, because I quilt, a lot of people like giving me quilting books. And I know a lot of people who like going to secondhand stores or grad sales and if they see books that are inexpensive, they'll pick them up for me because they're like, it was 50 cents. Or, yeah, we bought the treadmill and they threw in the box of books. Here, you might want this one. So this is Quilting with Donna Dewberry. And, I mean, it's okay. But the problem with it is it's, it's a little dated. Like if you look at the pictures on the front, modern quilting now is, is a lot of solids. You're not doing a lot with florals and pastels. You're definitely not making towel accents or decorating a shower curtain. So this is one I really should unhaul, but you know, it's sitting on my shelf just in case I ever need inspiration for something. Because you never know where you're gonna find inspiration, right? Um, again, this is another one, same thing. This is Soft Edge Piecing um, by Ginny Byer. And this one, 
she seems to use well that's actually kind of cool they they uh cut shapes out of fabric and then sort of applique them on and use heavily patterned um fabrics to give you different looks in your um quilts quilt patterns quilt blocks so it's kind of interesting um something someday i might want to try because you can do some pretty cool get some pretty cool looks but uh, it's not really high on my priorities of things i want to do or need to do right away and then this one was kind of interesting i got it at the same place so it's also by jenny buyer um and it's patchwork patterns but what this one does is it goes through and it goes gives you like all of the, the old patterns um, and it tells you how to do them. This is a good log or courtyard, courtyard, court, uh, courthouse steps. Wow. So it gives you all of these patterns that are classic quilting patterns um, in one book. And I, I really like that about this. And it shows you some older quilts, which, while somewhat out of date, is interesting because now some of these are old enough that they're um, in style again. So. That is Patchwork Patterns by Ginny Byer. Um, so those are my quilting books. I don't think, I think I've got a couple more downstairs. Like I've got a Cafe Facet one, which is full of really bright colors and gorgeous, but I'm never gonna make a quilt out of it. So it's not sitting on my quilting shelves. It's sitting on my, it's a coffee table book downstairs. So there you go. That's a random books off my shelf that I would never talk about other than this video. video. How about you guys? Do you have any like books that you're like, I'm never gonna talk about these books? with anyone, but they're on my shelf. I don't know why they're on my shelf, but they're there. So what do I do with them? <laughs> Books, let me know. I'd love to hear what the random things you guys have on your bookshelves. Um, I'll talk to you later, bye.